the best way to not be scared of messing up is waking up knowing you're always gonna mess up. The reason I'm coolin' is because I expect to lose every day and I'm talented. And I think people are fucked up because they're worried about making mistakes instead of flipping it. Attention is the number one asset. Vayner Nation, what is up? Another episode of Podcast with Friends. For the first time ever, four episodes because one comes through as a duo. We're gonna test it out. But it's a dude show and I'm excited about that because I actually just approved the Ladies Day, we have a Women's Day coming up episode that I'm excited about. Um, but we're here, it's a nice day in the city. I'm starting to feel like maybe spring is around the corner here in New York. I don't know, you guys feel a little bit? I feel like yeah, it's feel feel like it's a little something. Yeah. It was like 60 yesterday, so yeah. that feels very spring. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it's coming. Uh, but we're gonna go around the horn here and introduce, uh, why don't you all take one, two minutes to tell everybody who you are and what you do. And we'll start with you, my man. Sweet. Uh, my name is Nick Juhas. I do giant, massive science experiments for like on, on TikTok, YouTube, that kind of stuff. I also, I host a glass blowing show. And so that has sort of gravitated into us doing a lot of glass content as of recently. Um, but really like the take home is we do big science experiments. That's what we do. And when do you start that? So I actually started... Uh, in New York. So I started here in 2010. So it's a really long story, but uh, I was going to be a physician. So I was going to be a doctor and I took the MCAT and I was going to go to medical school. And there's a true story. It's like really in depth. So I just want to give like the cliff notes. Yeah. Cause you got about 13 seconds. Great. I snuck into a leadership Academy. My name was Patrick McArdle and I faked my identity in order to talk to some other people that were way more wealthy than me. And I learned that I did not want to be a physician at all. I actually wanted to be really creative and get into business. And so then I followed media cause I was a professional stunt rollerblader into this sport of media. Heard. I love it. My man. Okay, uh, my name's Adam Lister. Um, I'm a painter, uh, an artist. Uh, I do a lot of different things. Uh, aside from painting, I also do design for fashion brands and different companies like that. Um, I've done collaborations with um, different streetwear brands, different sports uh, brands, and uh, yeah, mainly just focus on my painting and it's awesome. keep at it. Yeah. And where do you live? I live upstate a little bit in Beacon, New York. Very oh, nice. Yeah. You like getting down to the city? Yeah, I do. Good. Yeah, it's nice to come down. Boys? Yes, sir. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you two lovely men are? Yes, uh, Elijah Janaku, founder of Eastside Golf and also creative director. Um, started the golf brand because I wanted to turn pro in golf. And the logo is me, you know, but I wanted to turn pro in golf, but couldn't find any sponsors. So why not take the entrepreneurial route and sponsor myself? So I'll be turning back pro. Uh, later this year and uh, hopefully a full schedule uh, next year playing professional golf and my main sponsor Eastside Golf. I love that. <laughs> so. where, where are you looking to play professionally? Uh, APGA Tour and also uh, Monday qualifying for Corn, nice. uh, Corn Ferry Tour. Yeah. My man? That's yeah, uh, Earl Cooper, uh, co-founder and CEO of Eastside Golf. Um, it's been an unbelievable journey, you know, with the brand really just changing the perspective of the game. You know what I mean? And showing that you can wear golf clothing on and off the golf course and just tapping into so many different opportunities. And so we're super excited. I mean, golf is blowing up. And we've been playing golf since the age of six, so it's like a dream for us. We often just think back, what did we want when we were playing at 20 and in college? What did we want when we were 16? So of course. it's been great. I love it. Dude, congrats, by the way. That's awesome. Thank you. No, I appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate that, it. <laughs> Do you, you golf? <laughs> no. Have you, ever, have you ever golfed? I used to work at a golf course. Nice. Um, I was terrible. Um, I fixed yeah. the greens. That was my job. Okay. Um, wake have up you, five in the have morning. Have you golfed? Never. N- never. Never once. <laughs> never once golfed. Yeah. Yeah. My well, brother. got clothes for you. Yeah. 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 I don't golf. I'm very concerned about um, the time allocation if I got into it. Like, it's a real thing. Um, and... Basically, the New York Jets is the thing that I've decided is going to be my kind of like all in time allocation thing because every mm-hmm. Sunday from September to early January, I'm out. Right. And like, you know, I work like a fucking madman. And so when you want to allocate time to your family, I knew when my brother seven or eight years ago got serious about golf and now, this, now it's his biggest passion, yeah. like it is for so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ironically, his big joke is that like I have slightly better hand-eye coordination, and like I've been out like eleven or twelve times, and he's always so blown away of how well I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like I, I think I was naturally 
disposition to be pretty decent at it. Um, but I'm just too, I just know that I can't do that because I'm gonna get into it. And already my Sundays, like I have so little time that I have to allocate every second to my family. Yeah. And uh, and like golf widows and like golf, you know, you know, that's a real thing. Like people really get about that golf life. And then like just the way my career and life is, I know that I'd be on all these trips and it's like an extra day and like, oh, let's fly to them. And the masters would become a thing I'd go to every year. Just I just don't have those days. Yeah. And so I've really like been very thoughtful of like, I know I will love this the most. Thus, it's like someone who would know that they have an addictive personality and decided to never gamble or drink because right. they were so deeply self-aware. I feel like that's kind of my relationship with golf. I'm like, I know you. You and I would be best. I know you golf. I'm just putting that right now. I know you golf. I know you and I would be best fucking homies. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna so, get you. We got an old record so, right yeah. now. So and that so, happens, and so I'm just I, just, I just know I can't go there. So that's why I've really kept it at bay. Do, do you think there's like any integrative process though where you could like do what you're doing? Yeah, of course. Everyone's gonna play you on like, oh, but you do business on the golf course. I'm like, cool, you don't know how I do business. I have 15 minute meetings every single second. Like I'm like, it moves so fast. Even people I fuck with, like I can see like once in a blue moon Right, right. Like I don't do business like that. <laughs> right, right. I don't take two hour business lunches. Which mm -hmm. so I'm definitely not gonna take a four hour business lunch, yeah. which is really what golf is. Anyway, going back around the horn, curveball question from the top, trying to bring heavy value to the audience. As vulnerable as you can, no bullshit. Don't PR me. Let's bring value to the kids that are listening and the grown ups. Real talk to the best of your ability, hopefully something you've never said out loud even. I'm really going there. What are you most scared of right now? Oh, I can take this one. Uh, to lose my dad. Mm, I understand that very well. I'm very petrified by the death of my parents. And that is because why, you think? Uh, he's, he's not doing great right now. Mm, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. But I, I mean, we can go into this whole deep thing. Well, I mean, we're here. Uh, so it's interesting to see it because I just had a daughter, right? And so she's one. The circle of So life, to right? see the beginning, yeah. to see the end. And is like, your dad terminally ill? Like it's no, like, no, 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 no. Which is like, which is nice. But you're in danger. You know, if you just connect the dots, like if you're, if you know, observational knowledge is there. So you can, you can see, okay, hey, look, we're in the hospital more than we're out of it. You know, we keep coming back. And so. How old is Pops? He's 80. And so. Um, and you're? I'm 38. And so you had at 52. Uh, no, well, he had me at 43. Thank you, bad math. Yeah. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's actually been really, it's really scary, but now that like I'm really into it, like I've really embraced it, and I mean I'm really deep in the psyche of what that means. Meaning um, you've like really gone there with yourself. Correct. Like you've, you've played the scenario out yes. to where you've actually like felt some of the feel. You'll never fully feel it, but correct. you feel it a lot more than you did two years ago, and you've like, you're starting to get a sense of yourself and preparation for it. I will tell you this is that uh, the appreciation factor for really simple things is like really high, but not like bullshit kind of stuff where people are like, I just appreciate, you know, like everything. I'm like, no, like seriously, like I walked the high line on the way here and I was like, this is incredible. Well, it's so it's so funny you say this. My dad's actually here. That's awesome. Which is very rare, but we're Why? about to do Wine Text TV. Cool. Episode, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. episode two. And so I want to do it. You know, it's funny. Because my dad lost his dad at 15 and my mom lost her mom at five, I would tell you only in the last three years, I've always known, and a lot of you have followed me for a long time, I always talk about like family over everything and like health and nothing else. Like you guys know my spiel, mm -hmm. but even in the last three years I'm like, oh, I'm like this because of this. To hear you just say, I'm walking the high line and I'm being grateful, I believe that I was so scared, unhealthy, like in modern ways, I probably would have had like, if I grew up in like wealthy parents that grew up in America, I would have been in therapy pretty early. I was, I'm gonna use this word, crippled in my childhood thinking about my parents dying because their parents died and I just thought that's what was gonna happen. And when I tell you, I thought about it every day, I thought about it every day and I will tell you, it is so clear to me why I Gary V is who he is, sh shooting, None of this shit fucking, all of you are gonna eventually DM me and text me and tell me you were right, because eventually we're all gonna have heartache at the highest levels, God willing, because you'd like to live long enough to go through some of that. Mm -hmm. Obviously parents being very high, that's real shit. And like sitting here talking about like, oh, I can't get my Facebook ads to work well, or like, or like fucking Macy's fucked us, or like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, that collab didn't go through, or like me being like, oh, what? We lost the client, like it, it fucking does not yeah. fucking matter. Yeah. 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 
And so like what ends up happening is at 80, if your pops is thinking it, it makes them retrospective. When it's happening at a young age, it allows you to actually start to become grateful. All of you, me included, I'm talking to myself right now and I'm about this life, all of you aren't grateful enough. All of us. If you're watching this right now and or listening to this at any point, when we launch it next week, and a year from now you're listening to this, if you had the capacity to consume this podcast, you are not grateful enough. Because that means you live a life that has optionality. And so like, I just don't think we're grateful enough. And like, no matter, no matter what someone comes at me with in the comments on something like this, they're wrong. They're like, yeah, but the, they may say, yeah, but I lost my dad. I'm like, how old was he? 80. You got to live that long? Because my dad lost his dad at 15 and other people lost their mom at birth. Their mom died giving birth to them. Like, there's life out there. Yeah. yeah. And so I understand that you're going through that gratitude framework. I believe in it so heavy. I'm sorry you're going through that. No, and I know I know you're saying like sorry because it's like you want to like express like hey well, listen it like sucks. we're both on you're, you're not you're not it's not you wish you weren't. There's a flip side of that coin though because there's a lot of anxiety going up to that. But now that I'm in it, I'm like, "Oh man, okay, look, this is shit, but be- because I'm in it now, it's like being like you think yeah. the meeting's going to be terrible, terrible, and then you get in that meeting or whatever, and then it's it's like, Over. "Oh, hey, it's not that bad now that I'm in it." It's the number one thing. So yeah. because I so, talked to thank so you. Thank you. Yeah, Seriously. I'm saying it graciously because I, by the way, I'm fully buying what you're saying as well. I know when it, God forbid, happens, there will be a sense of relief of it as well because it's been such a currency in my head my whole life. Yeah. I believe that to be true. That's yeah. how shit works. Yep. What are you scared of right now? What am I scared of? Uh, it's a tough one. I mean, I It's have, really um, tough because it's hard for us to be vulnerable. Yeah. Like it, it's hard to actually answer that question in this setting. Yeah. Like real talk. <laughs> like real talk. <laughs> But I'm just curious where, like, when I think about this podcast with friends, A, I, I, this is my new format, right? I'm excited that you all, like, you can see each other at All-Star Game and be like, yo! You know, like, I think about strangers to acquaintances, acquaintances to friends, friends to family. That's like, good. I yeah. love that for, that's how I think about life now. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, like, like, all, of, like, literally, like, now you have seen each other. You've spent, you're gonna end up spending an hour in a room together. Which leads to when you see each other again, or when you see, because they're content, you know how I feel about you guys. Yeah, I knew sure. it. For sure. And I really knew it. Yeah, I told sure. y'all. <laughs> I told y'all this is gonna happen for you. Because I'm because i good at that shit sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love this format because I'm hoping that you, you all, you four, become friendly. I desperately want the three, four, five, six hundred that watch it live to like really fuck with you. And I want the millions over the next five years that listen to this to fuck with you. And, but one of the ways to actually become friends is vulnerability, right? Yeah. That's the realest talk of all. Yeah. Like, of course you're closest to your family and your best friends. You talked real shit with them. Yeah. It's yeah. only about real <laughs> shit. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not trying to pressure yeah. either. I'm just curious of where, how far you want to go to the thing that's true. Yeah, it's for me, I mean, you know, I watch everything around me. I have a nine year old daughter and, um, you know, I look and I think about, you know, how things are going to play out for her in right. the next, you know, five, 10 years, you know, right. making, going into being a teenager, going into, you know, deciding what she wants to do with her life and just seeing the way things are so different than when I was younger and the new things she's dealing with. You right. Know, and the, Which is the same shit that your parents thought and your grandparents thought. But once you become the parent, you think that AI is so crazy, but your grandparents <laughs> thought your great grandparents thought sitting in front of the television was crazy, right? Right, or or marijuana was crazy. Y'all don't think marijuana <laughs> is crazy, <laughs> right? So, like, you know, to give you a little peace of mind, humans are underrated, bro. Humans are fucking resilient. So, like, we love to dwell on what's worse, but this goes back to it's fun to think back to back. I try to make parents feel good because they're stupid about technology. They blame it. They're like, what about TikTok? I'm like, be a fucking parent, take it off your kid's phone. Right. Right. We're soft with kids now. Like, our parents did gangster shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, we're all scared of all this stuff, and I'm like, so take it away. Well, right. they'll be upset. I'm like, that's called parenting. Yeah, that's the trick. Right? Limiting the time, you know, how how often do they get caught scrolling endlessly or watching YouTube forever, you know. But guess like what? That. We did the same shit. I stayed in my room and watched MTV and played Zelda 
and fucking like like and my friend would come over and pull out a fucking Playboy and like what? Oh, dude, like yeah, as if. Still- Right. I don't understand how people forget the fuck we were doing. Yeah. The fuck were you? They're like, they're just on their phone all day. I'm like, you did that? I'm like, These are like friends of mine who like are yeah. mad at me because I'm in technology. They're like, yo. I'm like, yo, what, bro? You played Sega Genesis 10 hours a day. Right. I know yeah, you, right, dude. Right, right, right. I know you. The fuck you talking about? You played NHL 94 and smoked the blunt 15 hours straight. The fuck are you talking to me about? Worried about the kids. You should be shocked you're alive, motherfucker. You're right. Yeah, you know what I mean? spend all day playing Twisted Metal too. Oh my right. God. That was a great That's one. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean? Exactly. As if we weren't exactly. listening to fucking Beastie Boys or Snoop or Tupac on tape deck or CD for five hours in our room right. reading fucking Rolling Stone. We weren't doing shit either. Right, right. I love how people have rewritten all my all these 20, 30, 40, 50 year olds rewriting history as if you were doing yeah. shit. Yeah, you weren't true. doing and they're doing more. They know more shit. They've got information. This is true. Yeah, my daughter's teaching herself Japanese on the iPad. That shit didn't happen when we were kids. No, we no. didn't have the opportunity to do We that. just need so much. You know? Unfortunately, the world has taught us to focus on bad shit. Mm-hmm. All the shit we're worried about has never been better. Yeah. Including the most intense shit. Yeah. We just yeah. want to choose. we just entitled. We're an empire. Yeah. We're soft. I did play Vector Man once uh, for like 24 hours and I beat the game. So. <laughs> and I had candy the whole time. It was Christmas. I remember it so well. Shout so. out Brian of New Jersey. Uh, but I get that. Like you love her more than life. So of course you're worried about everything. Bullying. You're thinking about everything. You're a grown up. Sure. I get it. So that, that takes up a lot of your mind time? I think so. You know, aside from the work stuff. Of course. In general, you know, worrying about that. Yeah, that's got to be yeah, the biggest I get it. realness. Boys? Know? Uh, for me, I think it's a little bit of a combination um, with all three, I would say. I mean, obviously seeing my parents get older yep. and not having a family yep. of my own. Yep. And so it's like I feel like I have so much to offer, but I love what I do. How I old are work. you? I'm 35. You're a baby. So it's like, but I love work, like nope. obsessively. Like, and I understand the concept. Again, that's why I said like the connectivity between mm-hmm. all of what you guys are saying is kind of where I'm at because like, I can go. I feel like that's the first thing that I noticed about when our brand started to take off and the success. I, my family, and it kind of hit me. We were at an event, and my father showed up, and I'm like, oh, shit. Earl, it's been 18 months, and you really haven't stopped and seen him, and he is getting older. How and that's pops? when it hit me. He's 60, just turned 60. Oh, he's a kid. Yeah. But, no, nah, but it's, it's, it's one of the things. He is a kid, but... As you talked about, like just that progression, right? And you see it, and when life goes fast, you know, when when things are going well, life is yeah. is speeding. And There's I look up, and I'm like, "There's not a single person that loses someone they love that doesn't regret that they spent more time with them." Right. They don't exist. Yeah. You might, there's people who really focused on it and feel com- like good, and they still are like, "Damn, I still like shoulda," right. you know. But there, like, I've read a lot of material on this, right? Because I'm the science guy, right? Of no, course. Yeah. The guy's like, I'm going to do some research. And so I, I did. <laughs> and the research I came up with is a lot of people ended up becoming really regretful of like not doing that. Right. So it's really interesting because like there is kind of this fine line and you can yeah, thread the needle. Right. But a lot of times in, like the, the one go-to that I always say is like, what would your parents suggest? Like my dad was a go-getter entrepreneur on rental property. So like that's where I learned it from. Mm-hmm. And he would have said, do your thing. Like don't yeah. hang out with me. Like this is boring. Right, right. So yeah. that's no, just I always mean, my go-to. I don't, they don't make me feel bad, but I think just again. No, you're just, ha- you're 35. Right. You're you're at a great fun age where you're just thinking about different shit. Correct. I think thirty five is a really fun age yeah, because yeah. if you're still single, like you know, four minutes ago you were just chasing, and now you're <laughs> like, huh? I wonder if I do want to set. Like it, you just right. start to yeah, have yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. a na- it's this generation's eighteen. Wow. You know, our parents and our great grandparents they lived to 40, 50, 60. That's why you got married at eighteen. You were only living a fucking fifty. We're living to 100. So our bodies and our subconscious is like, I'm not locking down at 18. It's, it's not like we want to hook up any more than our parents did. It was, it was the whole world right. was structured differently. And so you're just at a fun inflection point. Mm-hmm. You're just growing up. Yeah. And it happens more at 35 now than it does at 20 in the way we were all taught when we're coming up. You know what I mean? I agree. Yeah, yeah you're just, sure. you're having, like all of a sudden, Five minutes ago, getting married? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. All of a sudden, starts to become at 35, starts to be, 
and it's different for everyone. Some people feel it at 18, some people feel it at 50, but 35 is a common number I find. Again, I just read a trillion fucking DMs from people. Sorry to everybody who's watching, listening. Like I don't answer because I'm just trying to read the next one, <laughs> but I'm trying to answer here and there when it's, but nonetheless, like you're just at that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Because a lot of your friends also start to like have transitions during this time. Yeah, yeah. And what seemed maybe potentially court, it's the same shit. Like your one friend gets married first and you and your boys make fun of him and be like, ah, he's out of the game. Yeah. You know, and then <laughs> then a couple yeah. years go by and he's got a little one right. and you're like happy for him, but then you see him with the, with the kid at two and you're like, that seems kind of fresh. Right. It's, cool. no, it's beautiful though to see it though. You yeah. Know what I mean? the and I obviously don't put that part of my life in the, the world, so it's always a little bit more interesting for people when they see it because yeah. it's like I don't share personal life. Yeah. Which is unusual for a public figure. What are yeah. you scared of? Um, I mean, so I lost my father maybe two years ago, and uh, it was from you know taking care of himself. He had yeah. diabetes, and, and he just didn't right end up having about uh, six or seven strokes. So Sorry. it wasn't that I at one point didn't get to speak to him, but he literally couldn't speak. Mm-hmm. I was visiting him at the nursing home mm-hmm. and hadn't talked to him for maybe a legit, I'd say. Three to four years before he passed, mm. but got to see him, of yeah, course, yeah. you know, yeah. and just grab my hand, try to make yeah. that. But the thing that I'm afraid of is, did I learn enough to be a man mm. sometimes? Yeah, of course. You know, to be a leader, you know, like mm-hmm. I question me being, um, be vulnerable, yeah. but I question myself sometimes being uh, the leader of the, a, of, of the company. Mm. You know, uh, of the company and sometimes my family. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's more of um, just taking the time and thinking about the the right answer, thinking about my base as a as a person, mm-hmm. and then figuring out how that relates to how do I get that point across, or how do I just tell how I feel, mm-hmm. you know, or how do I guide people if I've never seen it done for you know in a lot of amount of, uh, amount of time. You know, so it's a uh, makes sense, bro. Yeah, it, I mean, it can. It's just, it's just, it's a very fearful thing for me because I just don't want to mess up. You're gonna, you know, but I think it's, it's the reverse. You know, just to jump on this because I think this will help a lot of people. And we went heavy off the top, and we'll go lower into like our passions, our interests, our hobbies, <laughs> and business. No, but it's cool. Like, just but I'm gonna se- I'm gonna use this to segue it. The best way to not be scared of messing up is waking up knowing you're always gonna mess up. The reason I'm Cooling is because I expect to lose every day and I'm talented. I'm, I'm aware that I was gifted by the luck of the draw when mom and dad had sex and by the fact that they had sex in the Soviet Union, I was born there. Americans and all of you watching right now, I don't think people really understand the Soviet Union. It's not like Russia today. The Soviet Union was North Korea. You couldn't leave. You couldn't leave. Not even like Iran, where like you're allowed to visit. Most countries don't take your passport. But if you live in Iran right this second, you can go to Turkey. You can go to the UAE. You can go to Canada. My parents spent the first 20 years of their life in a place you couldn't leave, aka jail. All those people in Cuba go on those boats because it's jail. Cuba followed what the USSR did. They couldn't leave. And so, you know, so I know that I got lucky that I was born to them. They're the best. I got great parents, they did it right, they just did. I, like, it's like being a good CEO, they're good at it. Especially my mom, make sure my dad's not listening. Um, <laughs> and then I also grew up with adversity and I grew up with diversity and I grew up so, for, like, it's, and with all that, and with now at being 48, with the gray hairs and all the accolades, I still wake up every day and be like, I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes today. And I think people are fucked up because they're worried about making mistakes instead of flipping it. I think, it, I think we all have to flip it. It goes back to gratitude. Yeah. Like, to yeah. actually give a fuck and be like, it is a sunny day and I'm alive. And being like, I'm good. To your point, I speak foo 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 shit, but I live it. <laughs> I see so many people spit it, and I know they don't live it because I know them. They don't live it. They're fronting. It's like kind of like street culture, right? Like, we know people that are about that life and aren't no. about that life. They're fronting. And so... On a happiness level, I know I live it. And I think one of the ways you could flip it is be like, you're gonna make unlimited mistakes. And as a leader of a company, like people can go work somewhere else. And you and your boy are gonna dig it through all the way through. 
And you guys, and then also like smelling your roses without accepting them. Ooh. Let me say that. Smelling your roses without accepting them. This is what I mean by that. None, of, all of us are fortunate that we've done some shit. Yes, you wanna fucking fixate on Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and be like, I haven't done shit? Cool, knock yourself out. <laughs> I, have no, I have no interest in looking at seven people on earth and deciding my self-worth is based on their financial success. But everyone's doing that right now. Smelling your roses but not accepting it for you two is you've already gone so much further. You know, you know this better than I do, but I'm in it. You know how many street brands never get to where you're at right this second? Let me give it to you real. Almost all of them. And you, you got, we all grew up in it. I don't know how much you followed streetwear, but like every friend presses t-shirts coming up yeah. the gate, right? Yeah. Everyone's yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna Everyone's build the next kid. Yeah. There's 77,000 kids telling me right now on DM, I'm building the next Rude, I'm building right. the next Palace, I'm building right. the next Kith. I'm like, cool, like, and I watch it. Right. When Matt Happy said it, I'm like, I think yeah. they might, and they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you guys said it, I told you, I, yeah. I told him too. Like, like, and I've been wrong other times too. Like what Pirate's doing right now, I'm watching. I love it. Um, but smelling your roses without accepting them, meaning, Never get high on your own supply even though you have supply, mm -hmm. right? Which is, you've already done so much more than any, like than almost everyone who's ever done it. You, you, yes, we can point to all the brands that did it bigger. Right. You can decide to spend all your time on Supreme or Staple, you can, but like you already have. So if you accept I'm gonna make mistakes every day and lose, and I've already done some shit, but I haven't even started, like I feel like I haven't done shit yet but I'm aware I've done way more shit than most people, professionally. Right. That's good shit. That's how you won't be scared. That's how you won't be, you know, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. That's how you won't beat yourself up. Gotcha. That's a good one, Gary. Yeah, when I was younger, I had an um, artist, teacher, kind of mentor figure, and he used to say, um, for every good painting you're gonna make, you're gonna make 20 bad paintings. It's a great teacher. And that always stuck with me. It's it good. is still to this day, you know, and I was a teenager when I heard that. And that, it takes the pressure off a little bit to yeah. like win every single time, you know, and I've heard you talk about that kind of feeling also. And I mean, that just kind of lets you get more into it rather than being on the surface of, you know, everything's got to be. I really, and first of all, it's a great teacher. Think about something, a man, man or woman. There's a man. A yeah. man said to you fucking 30 years ago, yeah. you know, like, and that you're yeah. bringing it up today. That's why it's words true. matter, that's why I love doing what I do for a living. Like one sentence. I take the extreme view on what that great teacher taught you. I think I'm catching a nut once in a, my, I'm a squirrel and I'm finding a nut once in a while. And I'm just eating shit every other day. <laughs> the problem is I love eating the shit. <laughs> this is a crazy quote, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, I just, I, I, I think the biggest issue in society right now is that people don't enjoy being Discomforted. Yeah. I enjoy the discomfort. I like when my back hurts. I like when I skin my knee. Like I like when I lose a client. I'm dark. That's right. Like I always feel That's like dark. I'm that guy in like a movie where like like if I was a boxing movie, like I get knocked down in the first round and like my tooth came out and I go in the corner and I'm like, <laughs> okay, now we're good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't like prosperity. I don't think it's fun. This is why I like not being a, a Boston fan. Boston fans are soft. If you're, if you're like 20 to 40 Boston fan, you suck. You've won everything. <laughs> you're fully entitled. You're a Nepo baby <laughs> sports fan. You're not interesting and you're not interested anymore. That's the interesting part. Boston fans when I was a kid with the Red Sox on that long forever 1918 or whatever the fuck their shit was, they were interesting. They had battle scars. They had character. Patriots were one in 15. Fucking, they had the Celtics. The Bruins had been good in the 70s, but they were starting to soften up. Then in the mid 80s, they were good. But like, they had character. Now they're boring. Nobody's, it's boring. Now, <laughs> now Boston fans walk around all entitled as if they were on the field. <laughs> Fuck Boston. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. I walked around like this. A true fan. I'm a real For Nick real. Fan, <laughs> Go ahead, I'm listening. Oh, I, I walked around the floor, right? Like, we all hung out right here first, yeah. but I was like, I, I wanna see this. And so I walked all the way around. Dude, that, I know you're like, I'm just starting. 
That is impressive. Honestly, Thank you, bro. straight yeah. up. The Vayner impressive. The Vayner Media Vayner X part of my world is the funniest thing. Like people think I'm like a motivational speaker, or like mm -hmm. I don't think people realize that I'm the active day to day CEO of a two thousand person club. And there's this is going on right now in London and Singapore and Australia, yeah. LA, and like like it's funny. It's like it's the thing that I'm most. It's my most merit thing, but I don't talk about it. I do talk about it, I bring it up like this a lot actually, but right. people just, pe this is the whole conversation. People are focusing on the wrong shit. Agreed, yeah. All right, what are you most excited about? We should go the other way around. Give me some time <laughs> to think about it. You, you guys have a lot to be excited about. about. Like, yeah. you know, like, what, as I've watched afar as a fan, like, it feels like it's happening, happening now. Yeah. Yeah. Like the moment, you know, like, you know, there's, yeah. those, there's yeah. those tipping points. Yeah, I mean, I would say, we have a chance to uh, change the sport of golf in total. You know, um, I mean, totally so far we have nine uh, collaborative uh, Jordan golf shoes. Um, we have a Major League Baseball licensing deal, NBA licensing deal. Um, we, um, oh man, we have three different tournaments this year. Our own national championship for colleges, um, NCAA regulated, uh, and then also, um, our own invitational going to be here in uh, New York. Oh yeah, later this year. Yeah, yeah we get definitely info, get, you get, out there. get me info on that. Oh, right. for sure, sure. I think I can help you guys. For sure, Thank for you. sure. And and lastly, you know, um, I would say it, it, I'm really excited because we did just close our partnership with uh, PGA of America. That's huge. And you know, Elysian Park, they're another mm -hmm. venture fund, and it's crazy because they believed in us. They called us like the future of the game. You know, for the PGA to say that and to really stand behind everything that we talk about. And even nice. we were at the PGA show this year. We had uh, Charlie Sifford Jr. Charlie Sifford was the first black yep. man to play on the I'm PGA aware. Tour. But we honored him at the PGA show where That's he amazing. wasn't where he once wasn't even allowed. You know, so just truly being intentional and and people seeing that and people following it is I mean, I'm most excited about because we get to show change instead that. of just really just talking about I it. I love it. That's you got anything yeah. to add, Earl? Uh, I mean, for me, I'm just excited about changing other people's lives and not say that like internally within our company, like we just did our first promotion. And so mm -hmm. when you see like... People being, it's crazy, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's the idea when it all started to when, okay, you do this and now you get the office and yeah, it's, it's just real. like one of those things where it's like, <laughs> I look at it like we... I was good before this. It wasn't like I was broke, busted, and disgusted, right? Like, I <laughs> came into this, had motion, and then now it's like, all right, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. But the the beautiful thing is to see people take a risk, to see people work hard, to see people really you, put that you, overtime. Like, yeah. I'll never forget one time, leave the office, and I had to come back and get something, and literally our system was in there, like, 9.30. I had no idea that I was coming back, but just, like, grinding, and I'm just like... Like, those are the days that, like, yeah, those are the moments where you're just like, okay. Let me tell you the best one that you're going to love next is when they start growing up, marrying each other, and having kids. Vayner's had, like, 40 marriages. Wow. And, like, yeah. there's, like, seven or eight babies now, I think. And right. it's just, like, me, just looking at you two right now, I was <laughs> making me think oh, of me and AJ the other day. We were together, and we're like, bro, <laughs> we decided to start a company, and there's human beings that right. exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell them. Tell uh, them. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, dope. No. Congratulations, You know, like, bro. it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Especially, it all made sense. In the first 10 years of this company, almost everyone was under 30. I don't even want to know what the fuck was going <laughs> on. Yeah. You know? What are you thinking about? Um, I'm probably most excited. I have a big, um, my probably biggest exhibit I've done so far will be coming up later this year in Tokyo. Let's go. Oh, wow. So, right now, I'm working, you know, full speed ahead, making pieces for that. Are you nervous? To, um, I'm anxious, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess, you know, I'm Have not so nervous. Have you done so a Tokyo exhibit before? I've done some exhibits over not there. Not at yeah. this, this level? Is, this is going to be the biggest one, How biggest scale. We're looking at probably around 20 pieces okay. for this. Wow. And then also, Are you selling at that event? Yeah. Nice. Pieces will be for That's sale. Cool. And then um, right now I'm working on doing some new collaborations that will be part of that as well. Um, I've done collaborations with uh, A Bathing Ape, A New Balance, Reebok, a bunch of different things like that, awesome. Hello Kitty. 
And now we're setting up some uh, some new exciting ones for this for this exhibit to kind of be part of the tie the whole thing man. together. Good so, for you. Yeah, so. that's awesome, man. That's sick. Tokyo is really dope, by the way. Really um, is. It's so, it, Tokyo is like so different. Yeah. For everyone who listen, this expense is fuck. If you're in the U.S., like if if you if you ever get a chance to be able to afford and go to Tokyo, for everyone who's listening, I couldn't recommend it more because there's not a lot of places in the world that are just completely different. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. like you know what I mean. Everything is an offspring of an offspring of an offspring. Mutations. It's just yeah. different. Different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's like ultra clean. Yeah. Like yeah, it is. It's yeah. wild. Ultra clean. <laughs> it's, ultra clean. Um, so the thing that I'm the most excited about right now is I booked a uh, 14 day um, mountaineering school in Peru. So I climbed Kilimanjaro last year. This all started, I was doing a piece of branded content and they were like, hey, uh, you gotta get this thing turned around real fast. And I was on a wedding in Maine. Well, let me tell you how many mountains are in Maine. Like none. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, like, and it was for Columbia Sportswear. So I was like, all right, well the creative is like, I'm gonna go climb a mountain. So I was like Googling, I was like closest mountain. And I was like, oh my God, it's like, it's like it's like 2,000 feet tall. So I was like, that's not even a mountain. So then I was like, all right, got it. I got the creative all dialed in. It's like, I'm training to do Everest, so I'm gonna start small. And I was like, that's a good lead in. Like, I'm gonna go with that. So then I did it and I was like, this is actually pretty tight. So then I came back and then I did the tallest mountain in LA and then I did Kilimanjaro last year. So then I was like, hey, hey if I'm gonna get like really into this, you're talking about golf, this got me thinking about that. I was like, now I'm like obsessed, right? Typical. So. ADHD, like yep. ADHD people like super obsessively go in on things. And so I was like, well, if I'm really gonna do you mean, Everest. You mean the actual superpower of life? Yes, That they try to yes. suck out of you in the Thank system? Thank you, <laughs> honestly. Is the actual thing that actually works in real life? Yes, right. it should not school system, be like medicated. <laughs> it's like, it truly is a superpower because it's like, it's like a pit bull, once you're latched on, you're like, oh, I'm gonna win now, like, cause I can't let go. Right. But anyway, so. The Peru thing is like, it's, um, it's a 12 day mountaineering school where you actually learn like ice picking and like avalanche, you know, survival. survival yeah. Cause if I'm really doing Everest now that I like told everybody that I was gonna do it, then I was like, I have to increase my chance of survival. So yeah. if I'm gonna do that, yeah, you don't wanna go. then I need to actually do it. So yeah. never been to Peru. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants is actually down here. It's called uh, Pio Pio. It's a Peruvian chicken place and yeah. that God, this whole thing started. So I was like, "That's awesome." Let's go to Peru. That's awesome. Yeah. That's dope. All right, let's open up a pack of V friends. Sick. Right. Yep. Let's do that now. I want you to pull a card, and I want you to look at the Thanks. characters, and I want you to go through the four cards and pull the one that most speaks to you. That's like Don't tarot share. cards. Yeah, we're doing a little something here. Got to mix it up a little. V friends cards. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You got you got yours. Yeah, I got mine. Go ahead. You go first. All right. Which one most speaks to you? I'm going with the Alpha Gator. Uh, the Alpha Alligator. Yeah, yeah. The Alpha How come? Alligator. Uh, it's just kind of like golf. It's Florida, um, and it just kind of just it can be. I hate to say it like this, but it almost can be like sweet or cute, but then, you know, if a it's gangster. time to get, yeah, 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 get to you it. You like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like you're, you're ready to fight at any moment? No, I, I mean. If, <laughs> I am. Yeah, I, 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 I am too. Yeah. I, I, and I'm the nicest. Right, right. No, if really, it needs to be, I feel like I, I can like adapt. I like living life that any, way. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. the nicest, but I think you should be ready to fight at any like moment. Like, actually fight? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, this yes. Show. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> you should be ready. Like, it's you not that you're trying ready. to be, like, fighting people, but you should, like, right. I mean, if someone was just gonna, like, swing at you, then man, you right. should be able to do that. For yeah. sure. Uh, oh, <laughs> what you got? Uh, mine, I got a uh, methodical mammoth. Mm, why? <clears throat> um, being able to get partnerships where in the first place, two years prior, when you first started, three years prior, they said, well, like, you'll never have no idea how you're going to bring this together and make it work. And, you know, just methodically over time, I, it's, it's so crazy after every time something happens, I'm like, yo, we got to stand on it. Got to stand on this. We got to, I know what we said, but we're never disrespectful or anything, but we tell the truth. 
And sometimes you the have truth, conviction. Yeah. Sometimes I the wish truth you pulled can... conviction cockroach. It's one of my favorite V friends. <laughs> I fuck with conviction so yeah. much. Yeah. The reason I made conviction, it's an alpha story for everyone. The reason I made conviction cockroach, like I put the words together with the characters for different reasons. I'm still blown away that if there was an atomic war, like the cockroaches survive. That's some real fucking conviction. <laughs> like yeah, I is. believe that I can live so much <laughs> that even if there's an atomic war, we're the ones that yeah, are left. Yeah, They're yeah. on some resilient shit. Yeah, I wish right. they were called rockaroaches because yeah. I would have been resilient rockaroach. But like, so you have. So when you say you're standing on it, you're really just to break it down for people that may not understand the context of the slang. Like, okay, like when they don't believe us when we say watch, now we got to go do it. Yep. Yeah, then we go do it and the build the company. The only way to do it is to be methodical. Mm -hmm. I like and build it. the company to a place to where they have no other choice but to see it. I love, I love, we are, we have a very similar thread on this. Yeah. When I tell you that the amount of times in my career over the last 30 years, my brain goes to, I can't wait to make them succumb to accepting they're gonna succumb to accepting what they wish. Sure. I, bl I love that so much. Oh yeah. Which one, my man? Um, I'm gonna go with Tolerant Tuna. Tell me. <laughs> um, well, you know, as, as a painter, I'm dealing with a lot of different people. I'm yeah. also running every side of, you know, being, you know, running an art studio. Yeah. So being tolerant lately has kind of really come into, you know, what I'm really dealing with. I love that. Um, you said something a while ago, you said audit, the t audit who you give your attention to, yeah, something like that. I believe if you like, you know, we've all heard like cir the, the circle of friends. I think the reason I say audit is I don't expect you to cut your t like your best friend that you grew up with. Right, you're not taking him to zero. Right, right. Your mom mm. who's toxic. It's not like you're never going to talk to your mom <laughs> again. You know, <laughs> but but can you limit? Exactly. That audit says, let me talk to mom. If you're, for a lot of you who are listening, if your mom is the biggest source of negativity in your life, but you love her, she's your mom, like I get it. Like maybe you don't have to talk to her twice a day. Like maybe it's once a week. Because that shit matters because you can't help your mom if she's depositing negativity into you, you're carrying that. Yeah, the way bad. you actually can fix your mom is actually by limiting your time with your mom so you can get your positivity up right. to come back into mom and get her up. Right. People think like, nah, Gary, I gotta do it, I gotta stay loyal. I, I, I love loyalty. But if loyalty comes at the expense of you actually contributing to the solution, then that's delusion. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I would say tolerant, yeah. I, you know, I'm not talking about my mom at all. I love you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are not toxic, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, Tolerant more, you know, in the business side of it, you know, yeah. people will treat, you know, me like sometimes just like I'm some website, you know, whereas yeah. I'm not, you know, just a You're store. Human. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so if you are going to come at me like that, I'm not going to fight back negative. I don't want to put that out in the world, but, you know, I'll have to tolerate it in a way. So I love you for that. Yeah. So honestly, that one, you've heard me on this one, man. That's just them. That's reflecting. The reason yeah. when I see all of you, I'm always giving love, it's reflecting what's in me. Yeah. I got love to give. Yeah. The people shitting on you, they're not feeling good. Misery loves company. Some of these classics are still tried and true. My man? Yeah. Um, man, I just wanna go off the to tolerant is so, like, I've learned, I've, tr I've tried to learn that skill more, like when you're really heated and you just do that pause thing and you're mm -hmm. just like, I am like, and you, you realize that you're only buying more time. You're like, oh sick, I, only, I went 10 seconds with being like level like 45. And so, t man, that is, that, I feel like it's an underrated Rated. one. I agree. Like, people well, are like, you gotta be more tolerant. One, like, of, to one of my favorite things about building V Friends was knowing that I was gonna build characters that one day were gonna be on people's hoodies and, like, you know, like really about that life. Like, I just know where this ends up. Like, I know what is gonna end up happening. It's gonna take time, especially at the level I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for Marvel Pokemon esque. It's gonna take me 20, 30 years to get it to the ambitions that I have. But what I'm most excited about is whether it's accountable ant or conviction cockroach, I already know that two or three of them are gonna be of traits that are underrated. Yeah. That then are gonna help people give a fuck about those traits. Like when you love Spider-Man, you love Spider-Man. But if you love accountable ant, you equally are gonna have to love accountability. Right. And the number one reason so many people are upset right now is they're completely not accountable. It's their mom's fault, it's their dad's fault, 
It's Biden's fault. It's Trump's fault. It's America's fault. It's mm -hmm. the system's fault. It's the company's fault. It's Tesla's fault. It's Elon's fault. It's Rogan's fault. Every, it's everyone's fucking fault. Right. AOC's <laughs> fault. <laughs> Bernie's fault. Like, yeah. I'm just sitting around watching everybody. I'm like, what about you? Yeah. Yeah. No accountability. Zero. Meanwhile, there's people that look just like you from the same circumstances right. winning. Right. So what was up with them? Right. Oh, wait, maybe it's you. Yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow, though. That one always like makes you go into like the spiral, you know? Well, it's funny. This is a fucking interesting nuance. I love you for that. I think people think that if you go accountable, it makes you shit on yourself and you become depressed. I actually think it's the reverse. I think it's a misunderstanding of accountability. The second you become accountable, you actually feel empowered that you can fix it. That's true. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's true. true. That's true. And yep. I, it's a new. No, but no, no you're but right. you're and you're right. Like the reason I'm taking this moment is to break down some shit that I think people don't understand of what I'm saying. I'm not saying be yourself up. I'm not saying be more shitting on yourself. <laughs> I'm saying be more accountable. And what I've seen is people go from deep not accountability and in real like using alcohol to deal, using uh, other vixes to going into accountability and then building up, just like working out. Like yeah. it's crazy to watch people go from like, it's everyone's fault but me to it's my fault. They become dramatically happier people. Anyway, I apologize. No, no, it's good. It's like, I, uh, yeah, we're going on tangent on this, this one. So but fun, like, right? but the, com the comparable thing, I do this all the time, and it's actually, like you said, I think the perfect word is empowering. Yeah. So once you start to realize, you're like, oh, I, I want to be like this person, well, it's whoever that person is or whatever. Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast, right? Mark Rover. Yeah. In my in okay, world. Yep. She's tremendously, so much bigger than us. But then I realize, I'm like, but well, wait a minute, like, we're like five years apart, and like, he did it. Like, we're no different. Like, that means that I have the same tools. It is quite empowering because you realize, that. like, oh, yeah, I actually can. Like, and so, it, but it, it stings. It, 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 stings. it stings if you value other people's opinions. True. I live my life as if I'm the only human being on earth. Because if I was the only human being on earth, then there would be none of you to tell me why I suck. Equally, there'd be none of you to tell me why I'm great. <laughs> no, really, the reason I think I'm able to deal with negativity is I don't believe the goat emojis equally to the emojis right. of your uh, piece of shit. That's, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Right? Like, yeah. I get a lot of love. You guys know. I get mm -hmm. a lot of love. Mm -hmm. But I don't think about it. I'm grateful for it. It feels nice. But when I tell you, not only do I not think, I know I'm not better than anybody. So I'm a good entrepreneur. And I'm a nice guy. I'm all right. I can't sing, I can't golf, <laughs> I can't cook. I, it took me 45 years to figure out that candor was a huge vulnerability in my life and I wasn't candorous with people, which made a lot of muckery happen in my real life. Like, I got flaws. Like, I just, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, it doesn't have to be hard if you just completely eliminate outside affirmation. Yeah. That's completely. Fair. Man, that's tough though in the digital world, right? It's, it's tough when it's you tough build your, your whole empire on it, right? Of course. But, you, but yeah. your gift is always your curse. That's true. Which is why you have to detach from it. it. You would be blown, if you could open me up and read my shit, like what, what my makeup is, you'd be like, this motherfucker doesn't give a fuck about Gary Vee at all? It would blow you away, especially because I work so much and I'm, it's, my, it's my passion. But it is not my justification. You know, it's not my, it's not how I want to be known. I like so much more that you guys know the way I've interacted with you more than what I've done. Right. So much more. Yeah. I, uh, I, please. I do have to please. say, one thing that you're saying is just like really, I mean, hitting with <laughs> me is, I mean, the reason that I started this brand was to turn pro in golf. So it's, it's crazy because while I'm doing this, this isn't about me. Eastside Golf, it like, too, it got bigger this than is you. not about, like, I got you. this is about everybody else. The more people I can bring into the game, the more people that have on Eastside, now they finally find golf attractive, now they can take advantage of golf all the things cool. golf offers, mm -hmm. then I'm doing it right. Now, yeah, my whole thing is, when I turn pro in golf, that's when I'm going to mm -hmm. put my chest up <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and be like, no, nah, I'm doing this shit. But with Eastside, no, nah, like, I feel the same way. It's not... I'm not saying I don't have to take uh, accountability Credit. for it or like mm -hmm. I don't have to be in the spotlight for it. There's no ego with, with it. I mean, I just want 
people to honestly take advantage of the yeah. game and further yeah. themselves. Yeah, I love that. That's you know, awesome, so man. but and and at the end of the day, whoop some ass on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> Real so. quick, because we're we're at time. I know you picked oh, versatile yes. Viking. I put uh, versatile <clears throat> Viking. I, I feel like it's. Um, this actually goes back to the ADD thing. I think that uh, in today's society, we've really sort of like, uh, is watered down is not the right word. We've kind of like shed in a negative light being a jack of all trades. And I, and I feel like for whatever reason, I'm like, that used to be like the, the thing. Renaissance but, man. Yes. And like that should not necessarily be, this should not be a negative thing for this reason. If digital changes so quickly and the world's changing so fast and now it's AI and it was NFTs and you know, now yeah, we're going this thing, something. then it's like, hey, then it would be really good to be really versatile because then you can learn new skills really quickly and then you can ride that wave and then you can basically profit it's, the margin under that gap. Right. So I feel like, ver and even outside of digital, just like, hey, like, by the way, like, I just got my roof done. It's really expensive, but I <laughs> did uh, roofing when I was a kid. My, that's my parents. That's what I did when yeah. I was a kid. Um, my dad was a landlord. And so I was like, I, I called him on it. The guy was like 120. And I was like, get out, like not happening. I was like, it does not cost that much. I was like, I'll go up there and do it with you. And so that versatile, like just having right. all those experiences, because then it creates this like really street smart. Yeah, there you go, man. I, by the way, I have been actively trying to get people to pay attention to how I do shit. I garage sale, I do VFriends, I have VaynerX, I write books, I, I like do a million things, a bunch of stuff. I do shit that's super cool. I have the hottest like rappers that are coming up in the game in here and then I'll go and talk about like parenting and being, I, I'm trying to make people, I'm basically trying to get my audience to find something that they're like that, but that's corny. <laughs> And because it's a reverse game that I'm doing on all of them of like, cool, that's fine, but you're just still gonna come back at some point and realize it's all good because you can do 100 different things. You gotta find a niche. My niche is I wanna do 800 things. Thank you, man. That's my fucking yes. niche. Yo. Please put that on a plaque. <laughs> that is the I best. love you guys. Thank you, you for being on the show. All right, you thank you. Thank you. Uh, real quick, because I want everyone to be able to really get it. Where can they find you best and uh, easiest? At Nick Yuhas on spell everything. Spell it out. Spell it out. So it's N I C K U H A S. Love it, Nick. I'm at Adam Lister Studio. A D A M L I S T E R S T U D I O. Very good. <laughs> I'm at uh, Earl Dream Big and check us out at eastsidegolf.com. Make sure you go download that app. And, you know, we're going to do something special for everybody for Gary V. Real quick on this, just to give you guys some flowers on the way out. You still get that glow when you see somebody cool that you don't actually know rocking your shit, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So oh, we got to tell the story. Give a, give a shot. Go ahead. So again, just you've always inspired both of us. So when we actually met Gary, it was like a straight hustler's moment. So we went into <laughs> this high level brunch. I'm not going to say what it was. We saw all these celebrities in there. Literally was like, tell the Uber or the driver, come back around. We went and got duffel bags, and we were literally like, you would have thought we were at yeah. a farmer's market. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, yo, yeah, hustling, slinging, slinging, slinging with our photographer. It was dope, but Gary appreciated it in that moment. So, just wanted to give you your flowers you as well. Sure, Stay bro. true to that. Sure. Love you guys. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>